Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen, Sunday morning and the old cookbook show. Today we're going to do another recipe out of the Five Roses cookbook, uh, bread, pastry, etc. And this is the 1915 printing. And we're going to do something called Yankee Buns. Um, I've chosen this recipe because I liked the title. I thought the title was kind of funny. And I also chose it because it's a simple recipe, not too many ingredients. And it's written in a style that harkens to an earlier age of recipes, where it's written as a paragraph. You don't first have that list of ingredients and then the method. The ingredients are listed as part of the method. And this recipe book is sort of half and half. Um, half of the recipes reflect this earlier style, while the other half are a later style, which we would more recognize today as a recipe. So we're going to get right into it. First thing, we've got some flour. Um, unfortunately, I'm not using Five Roses flour. The grocery store hasn't had any in a while. Um, I'm using a different brand. And then it asks for cream of tartar and baking soda. You could, um, today, 2020, just put in baking powder. Um, it was quite normal in this time period to use cream of tartar with baking soda rather than baking powder. Um, I guess a lot of people didn't trust baking powder to be strong enough or to last long enough. And I'm supposed to work this butter into the flour. And it doesn't say how. Um, it sort of alludes to using my hands. And so you would normally rub this between your fingers. I could also see people using one of these pastry knives or pastry forks, depending on what you want to call it. I'm going to use a pastry fork for a little while and see how that works out for me. Now, this came together really well using a pastry knife like this. If you don't have one of these, you could use your hands, you could use a food processor, um, you could use two regular knives and cut it in. Probably your hands are your best bet. I tried not to use them today because it's quite warm in the kitchen and I didn't want the butter to melt into the flour. Now, before I move on with this dough, I'm going to make the filling. Now, the filling, it says to cream together butter and sugar, but it doesn't tell you what kind of sugar um, or even how much sugar. It doesn't say white or brown. I'm going to go with a mix. Both would have been available in kitchens in Canada in 1915. I'm going to start out with a little bit of both and I'm going to cream these together. And again, you could use a hand blender uh, rather than a wooden spoon. Hand blender would make this so much faster and easier. Okay, the filling is all creamed together. Now, if you're like me and you look at recipes as a guideline or a suggestion, I'd put all kinds of different spices in this, but I'm not going to do it the first time. I'm going to follow the recipe. Next up, it asks for sweet milk into the dough. And it doesn't say how much sweet milk, just enough to get a stiff dough. And since I've never made this, I'm going to start out slow. I'm not going to add too much. I'm going to mix this in and see where we get. And you know, right off the bat, we're going to need a lot more than that. So in with a little bit more. Okay, I think it needs just a little bit more and we'll see where this goes. Now, when I use this cookbook, it calls for sweet milk, sour milk, and buttermilk. And people always ask me, what's the distinction between those three? So sweet milk is just regular milk. You go to the grocery store and you get milk and that is sweet milk, whole fresh milk. Sour milk is what we today would go to the grocery store and get and it's called buttermilk uh, in the grocery store today. And it's milk that has been soured with um, usually lactobacillus or something else. It's been inoculated and then fermented. When this book asks for buttermilk, it really is asking for what's left over after making butter. And that isn't something that's readily available anymore in most grocery stores. Um, I'm sure some specialty markets still carry it. But uh, for the most part, you're not going to find it in the grocery store. So I am going to go in with my hands at this point and see if I can bring this together because I have a feeling that I've got enough milk in there. I just need to bring it together into a ball before we roll it out. Okay, now it says to roll a half inch thick. So I'm going to put a little bit of flour down on the bench just in case it's sticky. And put it out, get everything out of the bowl. And I am going to pat it out first before I roll it. Okay, so I've got it rolled out kind of rectangular-ish. 
and I'm going to spread the filling on top. See if I can get a nice even layer. Okay, and once the filling is smoothed on, I'm supposed to roll it up just like a cinnamon bun. So, cinnamon bun made from biscuit dough without cinnamon. Interesting. Now that I've got it rolled up, I need to cut it into three quarter inch slices and then bake it in a well buttered pan. But it doesn't tell me what size pan to use. Um, so you could put it probably in a square pan. I'm thinking this one is the right size. But muffin tins would work really well, I think, for this. And I'm kind of torn over which one to use, but I'm gonna go with the pan. So let's cut these up and see if we can get them kind of all the same. Almost got them out. Hey, Glenn. Nice job. Hey, hey friends. Well, it looks like it, it, there's a pattern. It's like this was the first one, and this was the last one oh, you put in. Yeah. <laughs> or, or maybe vice versa. I think, it was I, vice, I think it was vice versa. So, Yankee buns. They look all cinnamony. Um, th there's no cinnamon. Oh. It's strange. It was, so it's from I guess the, I, I associate brown sugar and cinnamon together. Yeah. So it's from the 1915 cookbook, and very little instruction didn't tell me what to put in the in in the mix for the inside just sugar and butter but didn't say how much sugar or how much butter i think that these would be great with cinnamon definitely let's give them a taste and see what they're like they're interesting because they taste a bit they taste very they're very biscuit like that's what it is yeah so the dough is just a biscuit dough laid flat cin um, cinnamon sugar butter and sugar laid down, rolled, and then, and then cut. So it is, uh, if you put the right stuff inside, it is a really easy cheat to make cinnamon rolls if you had to do it quickly in the morning. Yeah, you could throw in dried fruit, fruit mm -hmm. you could throw in, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, okay, so I'm a sucker for anything that is all sugary, buttery, mm -hmm. and bready. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, well, I'm happy to eat a dozen of these just because they're, meet those, <laughs> check those yeah. boxes. So these are really good. Really, really good. No clue why they're called Yankee buns. No clue if they're called Yankee buns in the United States. But if you fear yeasted doughs and you want to make cinnamon buns, don't fear yeasted doughs, make cinnamon buns. But you could make these um, because they come together really quickly. They do. But I mean, but they are distinctly biscuits and not mm -hmm. a, a bread. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I could eat these all day. So, thanks for stopping by. Stay safe. See you again soon. I already ate mine. <laughs> <laughs> mine was gone. It's like, I don't know. Yeah, mine's gone.